Hi, <laughs> I'm William Martin Jean, and um, we are here with the uh, interpretation of the Sonata Six uh, that uh, we were invited to do. Uh, I actually do have a name for this. It's called um, Circle Set, and uh, I'm not terribly sure it means a great deal, except sometimes a title gives me a place where I know what the, uh, the piece is all about. Uh, looking at the work and having listened to the uh, uh, the sonata several times, uh, you know, I think most of us artists have gone through and done a number of sketches and scribbling and notes and things of that sort, uh, and trying to come up with that. And as we were talking before, the fact that uh, you know all music is probably the most uh, abstract of the arts, and uh, let's face it, the, the kind of work that we're doing is also abstract. So, you know, there isn't any right or wrong in the way that one interprets it. It could be one direction or a totally another direction. Uh, the first time I was listening to it, I was very much aware uh, of the, the structure of uh, a sonata, which uh, you know, basically has the exposition, the development, and also the recapitulation. So, I started actually with uh, uh, three half circles, but the thing is, in the process of working, uh, the work sort of tells you where it's going. I really chose working with the uh, the circle for a couple of reasons. It's a, it's a smooth transition, and at the same time, we also have taking each of the movements, uh, which are angular, uh, or depicted in an angular way. And I was using, working with uh, what I refer to as uh, painted paper, because this is uh, basically uh, rice paper that is stained with varnish and color and some other things and they give you a sense of direction, they give you a sense of texture and in the process of working with this as we look in let's say the beginning in the introduction we also kept the circles open so that things remain somewhat the air circulates in it and as we see the, the development of the sonata form as it goes to the end I really feel that the first one, the introduction, is simpler, uh, and we're using the repetition of shapes as uh, some of the clusters of uh, the keys, uh, also the idea that we're getting into uh, the glissandi, and we're going many different directions in here. When we go to the development, you can see the, the pieces that develop there are more, uh, more complex. At the same time, we have the air that comes through it, the repetition in threes that you see in the stripes in through here, and as we go into the recapitulation, uh, it isn't as transparent. Uh, the last movement it sort of pulls things together. We still have some complexity, and at the same time, we also have some of the reminiscence that you see in the first, second, and, uh, in, and now in the third part. Through, through the piece itself. I often work with uh, this kind of material because it lends one, it lets the artist make a selection quickly and place it. So rather than referring to it as a collage, you really refer to it as a sort of painted, painted paper. And uh, in the process of doing this, I see that we end up with uh, things that are repeated all the way through here. Some of the things that uh, we were actually involved with in, in looking at this. I have a background uh, in music. I play the cello, uh, I did play the bass, and I've had a background in, in vocal works. Uh, so we have some background in music, but I'm not terribly sure that had a great deal of influence in what I was doing. When I listen to music, uh, going to a concert, I basically see, and I see things visually. And so this was one another opportunity to look and listen to a piece and then somehow translate it from sound 
And one of the things we, we talked about before is that so much of the music, to me, needs to be transparent. And at the same time, there are places where things become more complex uh, in terms of the sound. And uh, as we look at the end of the piece in through here, we have a lot more repetition of, of some of the shapes. But that's, that's what happens when the artist is working with the piece itself. I think temperature is very important in the piece itself. So we're working with uh, warm colors. Uh, I normally uh, like things that are very uh, subdued in value. Um, in other words, we're, we're not thinking in terms of primary colors. Uh, there are other sounds that come up with primary colors, but in this case, these are very subdued colors. And at the same time, when we get into the warm values in through here, the warm values carry through in through here, and then when we go into the, the second movement, there's more of the, uh, the cooler values, and then the coolest, coolest values are right uh, in through here. But again, you know, this is the one that is more, uh, the sounds are loud, uh, louder, and also there is a, it's a culmination of the piece itself. I have always worked in um, uh, geometrically, and I'm not sure how that that happened. I think there's a sense of um, geometry gives me a sense of order. Um, it is not terribly um, emotional, and I, I think one of the things when I when I started working uh, geometrically in, in my own work, uh, one of the things that happened was the um, the fact that the materials one uses, and it just um, somehow you know it's the, the, the geometry creates a, a sense of um, compartmentalizing things, and I've always sort of leaned toward that. Although you know I'm also able to do uh, watercolors and portraits and things of that sort, but I'm always led more to the geometric, and it's. Uh, a little hard to explain, but again, it goes to the fact of uh, uh, creating creating order in chaos, which you know life is is very chaotic, and if one can somehow uh, pull that together in a form that retains itself, um, it, it it gives a little bit of um, uh, a concrete form, which sometimes uh, is not.